Good morning. Welcome to worship with us here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Elkhorn. It is good to be together both in person this morning and gathered virtually for those who may be watching online. A special welcome to family and friends who may be visiting with us this morning as we celebrate the Rite of Confirmation. It is a joy this morning to have five of our youth who have chosen to affirm their baptisms through the Rite of Confirmation. And so uh, we celebrate that joy together this day as we worship God. So let us then continue in worship as we call ourselves together. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me for the call to worship. The journey of faith is a journey through life. We sojourn on the pathway of the saints. We walk the same highway and follow the same landmark that led to them. But for each generation and each place and time, and for each seeker who travels this way, the road seems different. Let us all make a place for them and let them know that the family of Christ is their family too as we all worship God together. Please join me in the opening prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. As we end another busy week in our lives, we come before you, O oh God, knowing that you are always ready to receive us, shortcomings and all. We take time out to consider how our lives might better reflect your broad view of life, your forgiving spirit, your wisdom, your creativity, your patience. Today, we consider what it means to live abundantly like Jesus Christ, the shining light we follow. May the spirit of the resurrection be magnified in each of us this day. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you are comfortably able, I invite you to stand as we sing together our opening hymn.
with the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. If you prefer to look in your hymnal, if that is easier for you, uh, you will find it on page 361. So let us together affirm our common faith. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your need we testify. You call the world into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost Joy of discipleship, to be your servant in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, to resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of be seated. The historical witness for this day comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, verses from the sixth chapter of Matthew. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles are enough for today. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God remains forever. Thanks be to God.
first son was born in April of 1992. And in June of 1994, the movie Lion King was released. All right, I have to know who saw the original Lion King movie. Come on, people, don't disappoint me. Okay. All right, who saw the remake, the, the non-animated version? Okay. 1994, when our son was two years old, the original Lion King movie was released. And we must have acquired the VHS tape Y'all know what that is? We must have acquired the VHS tape as soon as it came out. Because by the time our daughter was born in February of 95, her big brother chose to bring her a stuffed Simba baby as her welcome gift when he came to see her in the hospital. And his third birthday was everything Lion King. Now we watched the movie over and 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 over. I believe we literally wore out that tape because then it was in Disney's like can't be released forever box and we couldn't get another copy. In 2006, we took a trip to the East Coast and we splurged and got tickets to see Lion King on Broadway, which was phenomenal. And we walked in, and our son, who was all into theater by then, said, well, this is a pretty small theater. It's like, oh, like, how good can this be, right? Oh, my goodness. These, like, eight-foot-tall creatures started coming down the aisles and surrounding you on all sides. And if you know the opening music, it was pretty amazing. And as far as I know, it is actually still playing on Broadway. It is like the third longest running Broadway show ever. If you've seen the show, then you know Simba, a young, playful lion cub who eventually, not without a lot of heartache, becomes the king of his pride. Now, in the beginning of the show, Simba's father, Mufasa, is trying his best to help his young son understand that as king, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to think of others first, that it's not about power and doing whatever you want. It's about doing what's in the best interest of the pride, the community. You have a great responsibility. Now, at one point in the story, Simba flees from his pride, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, close your ears, spoiler alert, having been wrongly convinced that he was responsible for his father's death. He flees. And on the back side of the desert, Simba meets the lovable characters Timon, a meerkat, and Pumbaa, a warthog. I mean, who can't love Pumbaa? <laughs> right? And they teach Simba the phrase, Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Picture Pumba here. Akuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Akuna Matata. Ain't no pass and craze. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free philosophy. Akuna Matata. Matata. It's a Swahili phrase that means no troubles or no worries. In Swahili culture, it's used to help alleviate a person's concerns and help them to move forward. Now, Pumbaa and Timon seem to be using the phrase in a slightly different way. They're encouraging Simba not to worry about the things that he can't control. But it seems that they're also living in a way where they have little or no responsibility to others. They're free out there to do as they please. Now, there is a bit of good advice there, because we often spend a lot of time worrying about things over which we have no control, right? We do it, admit it. We worry about things over which we have no control, rather than focusing on the things we can control. 
But no worries doesn't mean that we're free to do whatever we please. Hakuna matata, no worries. Is that what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 6? Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now, here's a clue. Whenever a sentence starts with therefore, you need to pay attention to what came before. Jesus' words about worry are set in a specific context. In chapter 5 of Matthew, we find Jesus on the mountain teaching his disciples the Sermon on the Mount, and he gives them the blessings of the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers, and so on. Then in chapter 6, he teaches his disciples to pray, giving them what we now know as the Lord's Prayer. In verse 19, he gives them these words of wisdom, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, whatever it is you value the most, that's what will capture your heart. Just before the verse we started with today, Jesus says this, no one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Jesus is not suggesting that his disciples be irresponsible about their lives. There's a difference between planning for the future and worrying about the future. He's not suggesting that, oh, don't worry, God will magically just take care of everything for you. Jesus here is warning against a slavish, anxious preoccupation with material things. The word that is translated from the Greek as worry has a base meaning of split attention. When we begin to worry about what we will, what we will wear or what technology we have, or we begin to worry too much about what others will think about us if we don't have the right stuff, if we don't wear the right stuff, or if we worry about getting as much money as we can, then our attention is split and we can easily lose our focus on God. We become distracted. We become preoccupied with other things, with self. To quote author Terrell Carter, being distracted by material things is in direct opposition to making God our primary focus. Throughout his ministry, Jesus emphasizes the idea that possessions are given by God and not to be held onto tightly. Instead, they are to be shared to improve the lives of others. Possessions are from God and are to be shared for the good of all. Now, confirmands, confirmands, in a few moments, we will pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And that spirit, that spirit is the source of all kinds of gifts and abilities and talents, and you each have a unique set of gifts and abilities. And so I charge you this day to nurture those gifts and to use your gifts, your talents, your abilities to bring joy to others, to use them for the greater good, to share your gifts with others. And in light of our scripture today, as I always told my kids, do not choose a life path based on how much money you can make. 
Do not choose a life path based on what's paying the most. Choose a path based on your passion, your gifts, your abilities, your loves, your interests. Become the person God created you to be. Simba had been through a lot of hardship when he met Pumbaa and Timon, and he quickly developed a good relationship with them, even though it meant he had to eat grub. But he quickly developed a good relationship with them, and Hakuna Matata was helpful advice in letting him move forward, move on from the pain of the past. However, it was also leading him toward feeling like he had no responsibility to anyone but himself. And it took an old friend showing up to set him straight, to help him realize that we have a responsibility to one another, to the greater good, that like Simba, we have a purpose and calling to use our gifts, to use our abilities, our possessions, our lives for the greater good, not for selfish endeavors. It's the message Mufasa had been trying to teach Simba as a young cub. We have a responsibility to others. Hakuna Matata, no worries. Doesn't mean we will never face hardships. We will. It's part of life. Faith in God doesn't mean we will never face hardships. We will. It's a part of life. Faith in God's power and presence is what gets us through the hardships. Being there for one another, feeling a sense of responsibility for one another, forming close relationships with God and with one another, that's what helps get us through. Therefore, do not worry about your life. Do not get into the culture of materialism. Do not let that culture tell you what you are worth. Because like Simba's evil Uncle Scar, sometimes the culture tells you lies. You are a child of God. You are gifted. You are loved by God. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. It's another great quote and great scene from the movie. Remember who you are and who you are called to be. Live into the purpose and the identity that God has given you. Hakuna Matata. Amen. with faith in God's promise and power, with faith in God's presence here this day, let us come to God in a spirit of prayer. <clears throat> God of amazing love and grace, we give thanks this day for this community of faith, for this church, for family, for friends, for mentors, for those who help to lead us in the faith, and even those who challenge us to greater faithfulness, God, we give thanks that we can be part of a community, a community of followers, and we give thanks for your son, Jesus, who showed us what it means to love, who showed us what your kingdom on earth looks like, love and compassion and care and justice for the least of these, dignity for all people. We give you thanks, O oh God, for showing us your way. And we pray, O oh God, that not only our confirmands this day, but all of us might have the strength to follow in that way. 
So often we fall prey to the culture, feeling like we need to live up to somebody else's expectations. But God, help us to be strong and faithfully following your way, even when that's hard, even when that's challenging, even when it goes against the culture. God, help us always to follow in your way of compassion and love. God, we hear the words of Jesus, and we hear the words of Pumbaa. No worries. But we do worry. We do worry because life has its challenges. We worry when the doctor gives us the diagnosis. What will happen next? We worry when we lose the job. How will I get by? We worry when we lose a loved one. How will I go on? How will I live without them? It's human nature, God. We worry. We worry about the violence in our world. Who will be next? God, Assure us of your presence. Assure us of your hope. Your hope that love wins. Your hope, your promise that you are with us, that your love is showing through others who care for us, who extend grace, who reach out in love. God, we pray for your healing touch on those who need it most this day. We pray for the strength to live and work for your kingdom on this earth, a kingdom of compassion and justice and love. And so we follow in the way of Jesus. Amen. It is a joy this day to celebrate the rite of confirmation with five of our youth. They have been busy all year uh, with their mentors. I want to give credit to the mentors, and you can uh, read a little bit about each of our youth and who their mentor was this last year. They have been working very hard on their own time and in group sessions, uh, working to learn more about their faith, to strengthen their faith. Uh, part of this program was to read the Gospel of Luke, and uh, so they have again heard the stories of Jesus and his way, and so we are grateful this day that they have chosen to affirm the vows that were taken at their baptism and to confirm their faith. So at this point, I would ask our five confirmands to come forward and face me and, and line up in front here. Can you all hear me well enough with the mask on? Yes?
the Holy Spirit bestow. Hear these words of Jesus. I am the vine, you are the branches. Anyone who abides in me and I in that person is the one who bears much fruit. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. family of Jesus Christ, if so, I do. I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire and choose the freedom of new life in Christ, if so, I do. I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if so, I do. I do. And do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, to witness to the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best you are able, if so, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. And you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith, to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world, so I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. And now I would invite the congregation to look at the insert in your bulletin and join me in a congregational prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, who in baptism received these your servants into the church, forbade their within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may continue to grow, grow in God's grace and in faith as you serve and witness to the work of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you, and let all of God's people say, Amen.
the Holy Spirit was within you. So having been born of water and the Spirit, you may continue to grow in God's grace, to grow in faith as you faithfully serve and witness to the work of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you. Let all of God's people say, Amen.
community, this congregation. And so I ask all of you, you promised to participate in the life and the mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God, enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world that so has promised with the help of God. As promised with the help of God. our moderator, Bobby Rader, to come forward as we officially welcome and greet you in Christian love. Let us join one more time in the spirit of prayer. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love sharing in the life and worship of the church and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this point, I would like to acknowledge our mentors who have worked with these kids all year and who may have gotten in some more than they bargained for with this new pastor and her way of doing things. Um, so at this point, I would ask our mentors to please come forward. And again, you can look in your bulletin on the back of the insert. You can read a little bit about our confirmands and uh, see who they have had as their mentors this year. Uh, so Anne has been mentored to Addison, and Stacy has been mentored to Amber, Dorothy has been mentored to Kyron, Barb has been mentored to Hayden, and Chad uh, Stoltz has been mentored to Brett, uh, and Chad is out of town this weekend, but he has worked faithfully with Brett all year. And so in appreciation, we have a small token of our appreciation for the work you have done this year as mentors to our your appreciation for these fine people. Feel free to do that. <laughs> and now, I believe we are on the closing hymn, is that right? Yes.
have to mention that that is a really special song for our family. It was one that was sung at my wedding, my husband. And if I'm not mistaken, it was also at Addison's baptism. So it has a lot of meaning to it. So now I have two announcements, and I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining us in person and online. Um, if you've missed any of our earlier worship services, you can um, watch them on our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe by searching for First Congregational UCC Elkhorn on YouTube. Um, and you can find a link to our channel along with other information about our church by going to our website, elkhornucc.org. Congratulations to all the confirmands, and thank you to all of their mentors for um, supporting them in this process. I know it was a lot of work. You guys spent a lot of time with them, so thank you so much for all of your leadership with, with all those kids. Um, could please consider supporting the ministries of our congregation with your financial gifts. The, uh, there are offering plates in the back of the sanctuary, as well as a PayPal tab on our church website. We appreciate all of your gifts. Thanks again for sharing in our worship. Hakuna Matata. No worries. God has your back. God is with you. From the moment of your born and cry until your last breath, God is with you. Go forth in that faith. Go forth knowing that you are surrounded each and every day, every moment, by the unconditional love of our God, by the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the inspiration and power of God's Holy Spirit, may each one of you know God's peace. Amen. <laughs>